try to assign the priorities for this stereo center. I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot, uh, and now we can go through it together. Well, first of all, remember that we begin by focusing only on the atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center, and we can mark all of those with a dot. Those dots are just to remind us that those are the atoms that we are comparing right now, the four atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. But we can see that these atoms are all tied. So, in order to break the tie, uh, we're going to have to go further out, and we're going to have to list the three atoms that each of these atoms is connected to. Well, let's start with the carbon on the right. What are the three atoms that this carbon on the right is connected to? Well, it's connected to a carbon and two hydrogens. A carbon and two hydrogens. Remember that we need to put the carbon at the top of the list because we always list the three atoms from best priority to lower priority. What are the three atoms that this bottom carbon is attached to? Well, it's also attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. Carbon and two hydrogens. What are the three atoms that the carbon on the left is attached to? It is also attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. A carbon and two hydrogens. Finally, what are the three atoms that the carbon at the top is connected to? Well, this carbon at the top is simply connected to three hydrogens. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Now, we look at those four lists and recall that we're going to be looking for the first point of difference between the lists. Well, the first point of difference occurs at the first atom in the list because here we have a carbon, here we have a carbon, here we have a carbon, but the first atom in this top list is a hydrogen. The first atom in this top list is a hydrogen, and that is uh, worse than the first atom in all the other lists. This hydrogen is beat by this carbon, carbon, and carbon. That means that this top substituent has the lowest priority, it's priority 4. So we'll put a 4 to remind ourselves that this top is priority 4. However, we are still tied between the other three substituents. Uh, on the right we have carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. On the bottom we have carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. And on the left we have carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. What do we do now? Well, now we have to go further out um, and go to the next atoms further out. Uh, so now I'm going to erase this dot and move the dot one carbon further out and I'll erase this list and I'll erase this dot and put it on this carbon one carbon further out and I'll erase this dot and its list because now we're going to have to focus on the one carbon on the carbon that's one step further out along this path as well. And just to make things simpler, I think I'm going to erase this dot and this list at the top just to help us remember that we don't need to do any more work with the top substituent. We're done with the top substituent, so I'll also erase the work that we did up here. It's a good idea as you're working on these problems, if there's, a, if there's many steps, to keep erasing your work from the previous steps because otherwise your work just gets messy and it's hard to see what you're doing. All right, so now we have these three dots indicating the three atoms that we're, uh, that we're comparing at this point, and for each of those we have to make a list of the three atoms it's attached to. Well, this carbon is attached to three hydrogens. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. What are the three atoms that the bottom carbon is attached to? It's attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. A carbon and two hydrogens. By the way, notice that as we make these lists, we are always writing three atoms that the dotted atom is attached to. That's the way this method works. We're always going to be able to list three atoms that the dotted atom is attached to. Uh, and the reason that we're only getting three is we don't include the atom that is closer to the stereocenter. For example, for this carbon over here, 
we saw that this carbon was attached to these three hydrogens. Now, we did not include this carbon back here in this list because we already paid attention to that carbon. We already went through that carbon as we were moving out from the stereocenter. If we included this carbon, then we have four things in the list. And that's not how the method works. We should only have three atoms in the list. So the idea, again, is that when you make your list of three atoms that your dotted atom is attached to, um, you should not include the atom that's closer to the stereocenter than the dotted atom. Instead, you should only include the atoms that are further out. So again, for this list, the atoms that are further out than this carbon are this carbon and these two hydrogens. We did not include this carbon in the list uh, because this is actually closer to the stereocenter. We shouldn't be going back along our path back towards the stereocenter. That's just not the way the method works. Um, now, actually, there is one exception to that. There is one case where you do go backwards along your path towards an atom that you've already paid attention to. There is one case where you do um, include an atom uh, that is closer to the stereocenter than the dotted atom in your list. But that's a little bit of an advanced case that we're not going to talk about right now. Um, quite a bit later in this series of videos, um, we'll get back to that uh, special case where you have to go back. Um, but in the vast majority of cases, um, when you're making a list of three atoms, you should not include the atom that's closer to the stereocenter. You should always be moving away from the stereocenter. So we can use the same principle here. What are the three atoms that this carbon is attached to? Well, it's attached to two hydrogens and a chlorine. Ah, but we have to put the chlorine on top. Remember that we always start our list with the highest priority atom. Chlorine, hydrogen, hydrogen. And as I was just mentioning, in this list, we do not include this carbon, because this carbon is closer to the stereocenter than the dotted atom. Um, so again, the rule is we should only uh, be listing the three atoms that are further from the stereocenter. Now we look at these three lists and look for the first point of difference. Well, the first point of difference here is occurring at the first atoms in the list, because on the left, the first atom is a chlorine. And that's better than either a carbon or a hydrogen. So this left-hand substituent must be the number one priority. Number one priority on the left, because chlorine beats carbon and hydrogen. And now we have the bottom and the rightmost substituents. Well, again, their first point of difference is the first atom in the list. This carbon is a higher priority than this hydrogen. Um, so the priorities that we have left are numbers two and three. This must be the number two priority. And on the right, we must have the number three priority, uh, because carbon beats hydrogen. So now we've assigned all the priorities. Number one on the left, number two on the bottom, number three on the right, and number four on top. And again, the way that I've written this on the board is the type of notation that I would recommend that you use when you're first learning how to do these problems. Use a dot to indicate the atoms that you are comparing. And then if you have to move further out, move your dots further out so you can see again which atoms you're comparing. Keep writing down a list of the three atoms that each um, of the dotted atoms is, conne is uh, connected to. We can use arrows to show where our lists are as we're going through. And also, if you have a bunch of ties and you have to keep moving further out from the stereo center, um, your work is going to get pretty messy unless you keep erasing your previous dots and your previous lists. So when you don't need your previous list, you can go ahead and erase those. Um, and again, of course, as you move further from the stereo center, you should erase your original dots and place the dots on the new atoms that you're comparing. Once you've had a lot of practice at these problems, you'll probably be able to do a lot of this in your head and you won't need all this notation. But as long as these problems are difficult for you, it's a good idea to try to imitate the notation that I'm using in these videos.